Hello and welcome to Mid-American Gardener. We are glad that you've joined us because we just love talking about plants. And so we're here to talk about all things from the garden. Thank you for watching. My name is Diane Nolan and I teach horticulture, but not in the summer, at the University of Illinois in the College of ACES, Department of Crop Sciences. So I might answer a question about perennials or cut flowers, but we have three talented gardeners here. So let's find out their expertise and they may answer a question or two. And let's start first with you, David Robson. Thanks, Diane. I'm David Robson. I'm a horticultural and pesticide specialist here at the University of Illinois, also College of ACES and Department of Crop Sciences. Today, I wanted to talk about uh, probably the best thing that occurs during summer, and that's having <laughs> peaches. And this was a great year, or is a good year for Illinois peaches. We have uh, all different sizes, all different types. We can get some very early peaches. We have white peaches. We have those little donut type of peaches that uh, some people like. I, I, to me, they're more of a, a novelty than a good peach you can sink your mouth into and then have it dribble down your chin and then on your shirt above the kitchen sink. <laughs> All different sizes of peaches, all different types. Basically, the size is a condition of watering. It's also a condition of thinning on the tree. Some of the growers thin quite a bit to get larger peaches. Occasionally, you're gonna get a peach that's gonna uh, be picked too green, and if there's no color to it, it's gonna be mealy by the time it ripens. Probably a good way to tell if your peach is going to ripen is just stick your nose to the blossom end of it, or the stem end, even if there's just a, if it still feels firm, you still should get a nice uh, scent of peach. Put it on a counter, put it in a paper sack for a couple of days, make sure that uh, it doesn't start rotting and it will be tasteful pretty soon for pies, jams, or just fresh eat, eat, eating. Yum. I know. Wow, thanks for showing us those good ones. Some years they're not very good. This year, yeah. great. We're frosted. Yes. So, thank you. And now, Kay Carnes, let's okay. go to you next. Okay, I'm Kay Carnes. I'm a Champaign County Master Gardener. <clears throat> My areas of expertise are vegetables and herbs and plants and seed saving. And tonight I brought a couple, of, I do a lot of heirlooms and I brought some because they're kind of fun to do and they taste good too. This one is, is a tomato and it's a green tomato and it's fairly, this one's kind of common, it's called green zebra. And you can see it has the stripes. And you can tell green tomatoes are ripe because they'll get a yellow blush to them. But when you cut it open, the flesh is green. This is actually a cucumber, and it's called little potato. Um, they're really quite good. Uh, the, the skin is a little tough, so a lot of times I'll peel that off if I'm just slicing them fresh. And then the last thing I have is a bean. And this is a long bean. Um, this happens to be a um, Thai, Thai long bean. Um, there's several different varieties of these. And they, as you can see, they are quite long. Um, and I especially like these for stir frying. Um, and this one's purple. And unlike purple bush beans, it holds its color when oh, you cook good. it. So it, I was just going to say, most green. purple beans just go right to green. They yeah. do. As What's soon the as the heat hits them, they're green. But these, this does hold its color. Oh, that's great. I've grown the yard long bean. Yeah. That, but I'm going to try Thai long. That Thai sounds... long. There's another one. Chinese red noodle is, is similar oh. to this. In the and it's so pretty to have that color in mm -hmm. the garden. Do they have to be staked up or trellis? Uh, I so have they mine on trellis, trellis just because they're a pole type bean. And uh, although this one was kind of laying on the ground, um, but. Yeah, they are pole beans pretty much, so. Well, I'm interested in that cucumber. I'm growing the muncher ones and the little, um, oh, they look like the yellow ones or the white ones. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, but um, those are good. Lemon? The lemon ones, thank yeah, you. They're, they're good. Yeah. I haven't gotten any lemons, but the munchers, oh, the, the skin is really thin. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. I have two other varieties also, oh. but yeah. uh, this, this one's kind of different. But that one's interesting. <laughs> good, thank you, Kay. And now, let's go to you, Jim. This is Dr. Jim Appleby. Well, I'm an entomologist at the University of Illinois, so I deal with the insects and mites attacking trees, shrubs, and flowers. Now, over the years, Diane, we've had a few questions concerning yes. aspen trees. Mm -hmm. And one question that people ask, where can I purchase aspen trees? 
it's really difficult to find uh, aspen trees in the nursery. So the best place I found is the um, by sending an email or, or a question or, a, or calling them is the Arbor Day Foundation. So if you want to search on the internet, just go to arborday.org, and when you go to that site, uh, you can look under quick growing quick growing trees, and you'll find aspen. They sell for about twelve dollars a piece, but these are rooted trees, uh, uh, bare root trees that are about two feet in height. And I bought some several years ago, and they d have done really, really well. So I, I would highly suggest that site. Let me talk a little bit about aspen. It's, it's a tree that I really love. Uh, and I wrote all this down so, <laughs> so I remember everything. First of all, the leaves are heart-shaped, and they look like this. And the nice thing about aspen, when the leaves uh, have a little slight breeze, they just the whole tree <laughs> seems to sh shimmer. So I really like them uh, that from that characteristic, and then the uh, they're very fast growing. They they can uh, grow a matter of a couple of feet in just a short period of time. Then they have the white bark. Now this is the aspen bark, and you can see it's sort of a, a yellowish. I mean, sort of a grayish green in color. This is the white birch. So the aspen bark is not as white as the white birch. However, the uh, the uh, aspen is is resistant to emerald. I mean, to uh, bronze birch borer. If you have white birch, it's often susceptible to bronze birch borer, which kills the trees. You just don't see many white birch trees anymore in, in throughout the Midwest because of the bronze birch borer. So the quaking aspen is resistant to the um, bronze birch borer. So that's what makes it. Now they have yellow foliage in the in the fall months, which if you've ever gone out west, you see these beautiful stands of yeah. um, aspen out west in, in contrast to the green foliage of the evergreen. This is really striking. Um, you, they are actually uh, can be grown in zones one to seven, which means you can actually grow them up to about southern uh, Tennessee. Mm. And then um, they have some bad characteristics, so they're certainly not a tree that you'd want to plant in the probably in the urban or suburban area because they do have root sprouts. It can actually, they can have these sp sprouts that come up from the roots, oh, some maybe 30 or 40 feet away from the tree. So you don't want to grow an aspen tree near your garden or you have all these roots on, in your garden. So they do have that bad characteristic. Uh, in, the, in the aspen, they have the male and females. Now, I have all male trees. However, in the spring, and generally in late March, they produce these little things called catkins. And uh, they look like little caterpillars. Uh, they fall from the trees generally sometime in, in uh, late March. So they can clog the gutter. So, you, you know, it's sort of a nasty little thing to have these things dropping all the time. But, you know, it's just one of those things that trees have. They also have a saw fly that gets somewhat bad on the aspen foliage. So we really need to examine the foliage carefully during the months of May and June because of the saw fly. They're easily controlled with almost any insecticide, but if you don't, they can actually completely defoliate an aspen tree. I think that's about all I have to say about aspen, but I really love the aspen trees. And we do get those questions, so I'm glad you handled that for us. <laughs> Well, I am going to show some onions, but I see that we have a caller who's asking a question about onions. So I'm just going to go to her question. Let's go to line five, and is it uh, Velma? And it's about onions. Line Hello. five. Hi. Yes, I was wanting to find out how you uh, grow onions big below the ground. I don't want just. I got green onions, at, you know, on top ground. But I want the bottom to grow great big. Well, I, Perfect timing. <laughs> I just happen to have some onions here. And I wanted to talk about that because um, some years they don't grow very big. But I did some research, and Dixondale is a really good provider <laughs> of onions um, and starts. And so the secret is when you get them, you plant them as soon as they come, which could be end of March or 1st of April, you know, depending on where you are in the Midwest have your, the bed ready beforehand, and then um, I side dress it with a, a complete fertilizer. 
Um, I actually got one from a garden center that was a 434, but you could use a 10, 10, 10. But you want to fertilize to the side, not right where you put the onion, and then three weeks later. And I got these put in before it really rained a lot this spring, and so I think that really helped it because it's fertilizer and water, just like with the peaches. It's fertilizer and water, and then you keep it well weeded because onions really do not like to have any weed competition. I mulch mine, but then when they start to bulb, you want to keep the mulch away. With you don't what do have... you mulch? Pardon? What's your mulch? I use aged hardwood mulch. Okay. And then I, you know, I push it away, and then when you pull it up, oh, it's so easy to pull up. And look how, I didn't mm. clean these. They just came right out of the mulch. Mm. But how you know then when to harvest, is they, they will actually fall over, and that says to me, pick me. But I did uh, choose two onions that are good keepers. I mentioned it in the spring, and so now you're seeing them. Uh, this is Red Zeppelin. I have to be honest with you, I chose it the first time because I thought the name was so funny. <laughs> it's not Led Zeppelin, it's Red Zeppelin. And then this one is Copra, C-O-P-R-A. These have been my two best over the last five or so years. Uh, the last one I had Red Zeppelin was about a week before I started doing Green Onion. So it lasted 11 months, and so this will last 10 wow. months. But I've been eating green onions from them and small onions, but now uh, I'll just take a, a screen, a window screen, and put it out horizontal up above the ground and put these out on them, dry them. You want them dry. You don't want any moisture. And they will keep in you know dark area a little bit cooler. How long do you dry them on the screens? Um, they will start to brown, and so... <laughs> This year it might just be a week. <laughs> you know, it may not take very long, but I just, you know, and then you cut off and leave an inch at the top and I remove the roots. And it also helps to have good quality soil that's loose yes. so they can expand. And you said you had I yours have a raised bed, bed and I grow them in a wide row and so, and mulch. So I'm pretty happy with them because this was a rough year. I did have to water yeah. in June because yeah. the faucet just turned off after April and May. So, but anyway, yeah. thank you for asking an onion question because <laughs> I was all ready to go with it. So we have great viewers. Well, let's go to another question on line two. And also he has a question about squash. Is that correct? Line yes, two. I have problems. The, uh, they bloom, they don't set on, and also the blooms dry up and fall off. So I don't know whether I'm not watering them enough or too much or what's going on. I've noticed my squash have just started to flower. Right. And there could be heat involved. Yeah. And it could be the male flowers that come on first to mm -hmm. begin with because you have a flower that's both male and female, and obviously male's never going to produce right. anything. Yeah. Um, and you can tell that because there won't be any... There's nothing... Uh, there's no pistil right in the, the middle, base. and it's not swollen at the base, yeah. yeah. Uh, so hopefully... And the heat, yeah. I, it may be heat, so if you can wait it out, there's nothing you can do except hope that it gets a little bit cooler. Um, tomatoes will be doing that in the heat. Yeah. They're sensitive, so are peppers. Well, the, uh, tomatoes are more sensitive to heat during the night. Heat during the day is not the such a problem. Time. It's when it's hot at night that, that you have problems with your tomatoes. So if she would just <laughs> do some watering for the squash mm -hmm. and make sure it's not water. Mm -hmm. Although we've getting, been getting a few little rains, but it's been spotty. You, yeah. Someone next to you may be raining yeah. a mile away, you don't get it. So make, eliminate water as a problem, mm -hmm. and it, then it might be heat. But that will settle itself out yeah. after time. And then she's going to have too much zucchini. And then you'll be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> dropping them off at neighbors and running or at away really Or at Mid-American Gardener. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a beautiful scene of yeah. squash. So thank you for your question about squash. Now, we have a zucchini question. Let's go to line three with Betty. Hi there, Betty. Hi. Um, I'm so, so glad you're here because we have a problem with that community garden here in Mantua. Uh, our, zu our zucchini squash have, we discovered them this week, a little tiny, tiny gray insect. It's so tiny I can't tell you what the parts look like, but it looks to me like it might have a little proboscis and some maybe some antenna, but it's many times smaller than a house fly. Um, and also on the back of the leaves, and the, there are little orange-colored, tiny little bead-like eggs, <laughs> which I believe must be 
what these things hatch from. Can you tell me what they are? Oh, we have an entomologist, <laughs> and we have other people <laughs> grow <laughs> special. Well, I okay. think it all agree. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jim, go for <laughs> we it. We know what it is. Well, I think you have the squash bug. <laughs> yep. And uh, one way that you can get rid of those with uh, a neighbor of mine used a vacuum, one of these little, uh, what do you call them, red little, devils or dust little, devils. Dust devils. Just a little yeah. mobile. Yeah, a little yeah. mobile thing. And she actually just used that to collect them up, just suck them up. So that's one way. The other way is to use sprays, and uh, I would think probably seven is the spray that you could, or dust that you could use. You don't have to put very much on, just a very light dusting. Now, but, now, um, but they seem to be on the back side of the leaves, mm -hmm. and the leaves are very large. How do, do I have to dust underneath the leaf? Well, it would be better if you could do that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but they're very, I thought the squash bug was bigger than this. Well, they will grow much yeah, bigger. You, so <laughs> you, what you're finding now are just very, very young ones. But, really uh, hatched. Which is the time yeah, to... Which is the time to get them under mm -hmm. control. But she should also take a pocket knife and scrape those eggs so, that she's finding mm -hmm. on the leaves and mm -hmm. put them on in a can or a sack and get rid of those too. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be crucial. Yeah. So you are just describing how important scouting is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Uh, that's exactly what you should be doing this time of year. So well done. And like Dave would say, read the insecticide label. <laughs> And follow all of the directions, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and all and directions. we don't condone anything else besides that. Yeah. No. So please don't do that. Okay. Well, let's go to Cheryl's question on line four, and it's about hornets. Is that, is that your question? Yes. Oh, thank you so much for taking my phone You're call. welcome. I am having a very bad problem in my backyard garden. I planted green beans for the first time this year, and between my garden on one side and my cucumber patch on the other side, I'm having hordes of wasps or hornets that are just going crazy back there where I can't get to my green beans, I can't get to my cucumbers because they're just going crazy. I've tried uh, the things on the internet for like a sugar uh, combination to try, all I'm getting in those are ants, but they're still swarming where I can't get to my garden to pick my vegetables. Well, do you, find, do you find that these uh, wasps or hornets are coming out of the ground somewhere? Well, well, that's what we thought, too. So we'd go out after, you know, it would, in, towards dusk, and we tried to get rid of, I did see some holes, and my husband's very allergic to wasps and, and bites like that, so I seen some holes and we tried to get rid but they're like swarming. Well I, I still think you probably have the yellow jacket and they make their nest in the ground and so uh, the insecticide 7 either as a dust or a spray uh, probably want to do that in the evening hours and then spray spray the, uh, the around the holes and do that after dark and your husband can hold the flashlight and, and do that, and I think you would get rid of them that way. I was also thinking at this time of the year, only because I've seen them out in the park, the cicada killers. And it, there's a difference in the size of oh, them, yeah. but when they get close to the ground with their nest, that's another one, so she could actually Google yellow jacket or cicada killers to actually find out. Yeah. And cicada killers are beneficial creatures. But, so, you know, the size difference, I mean, if, if they're oh, so yeah. abundant, uh, if they're so abundant, How I've never seen them. How big are cicada killers? Oh, gosh, like that. Okay. Yeah. You know, so, so that's going to be apparent. Oh, yeah. Right. Apparent. Yeah. And the yellow jackets are going to have that, the color to them, too. So, but I mean, I just know both of them are out there and about mm -hmm. at this time of the year. Yeah. Because I was in the backyard and I thought there were cicada killers back there and they didn't really pay any attention to me. Yeah. Right. And with the cicadas out now, I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but so you don't, if you're allergic, you don't want to no, guess. No, for either one. Yeah, you don't want to chance. Well, we wish you well with that. That could be a little bit of concern, but find out what it is first. Okay, let's go to Sherry's question on line six about yuccas. Hi, Sherry. Hi. I have... Uh, I have some beautiful yuccas. I have probably 10 of them. And they bloomed really nicely early. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, the blooms are gone, and here's those ugly stalks. 
and I wonder if I should leave them or can I cut them down? I would definitely deadhead, wouldn't you folks? <laughs> Unless you want additional seeds. Yeah. Right, they are unique looking. They are unique, but if she calls them ugly, that right. may not be the same as unique. Correct. So <laughs> it's just, uh, it's really, you're the artist in the garden. It won't hurt the plants. No, no, it won't hurt the plant. So yes, you can trim those down uh, very definitely. Okay, well thank you for your question. And we're gonna do another one before we go to the emails. Let's go to Julie's uh, tomato question on line two. Hi, Julie. Hi, Diane, hello everyone. Uh, yes, I love my tomatoes and I have some growing. And I heard the blonde haired lady say that tomatoes, I thought she said tomatoes don't like hot nights. <laughs> And I always thought that Illinois grew good tomatoes because it's hot and humid at night. So now I'm confused. Well, it, it's, not so, it's not the humidity so much, that's fine. But when temperatures at night stay really hot, like you know, in the 80s sometimes. It'll, oh, well we're good to go. Uh, yeah. And it's not <laughs> that hot. Yeah. Uh, then, then the tomatoes, the uh, flowers don't develop properly. Right now everything's okay, so you don't really need to worry. But um, So she is right, tomatoes mm -hmm. like it hot. Yeah, I mean, so they, they, they like the humidity, yeah. you know, the, but not at night. So, so and I'm, I mean, but it's got to be pretty hot, 80s, like I said, okay, which is unusual. Good. That's, I hope we don't get that. I hope so too. <laughs> I mean the whole summer, I hope we don't get that. Well, so that for was now good. you're good. <laughs> I'm glad you followed up on that because I wasn't sure about the temperature uh, amount. Okay, well let's go to some emails and I'm gonna start with you, David. Thanks, Diane. I have an email from Cheryl who's wondering about a sunset maple, which is a red maple, a true red maple. It was planted in the fall of 2012. It was uh, looking good for a couple of years. Now it started dropping its leaves during the summertime. Uh, this year it didn't leaf out very well. And by the way, when it started dropping its leaves, they also turned red early in the summertime. Uh, right now, she wants to know whether the tree can be saved or not because essentially there's not many leaves on it. She doesn't think it's been overwatered. A uh, couple things pop out. Number one, it's an, she said a new subdivision which means that it probably has a half an inch of good black topsoil on it at the most. Um, maybe that's, that may even be stretching it so there's clay underneath and on top of that it could be compacted underneath. Uh, when she planted the tree it was probably in its own soil. It was saying, ha, ah, this is great, I like my own soil as the roots started growing. That wasn't occurring. The roots were going out to the clay, hitting the clay. It's also possible that the red maple <coughs> which tends to be uh, planted a little bit too deep, never got a good flare. I'm gonna say that if it's lost more than 50% of its leaves and branches, it may be time to replant the tree. I definitely would not put another red maple in there. For those people who are getting red maples, they should be getting leaves of almost the size of your palm every year. If they start getting, or your hand, if they start getting the size of your palm or smaller, uh, you probably need to look at the terminal bud scale scar and you're probably getting poor growth. Again, that goes back to planting. I doubt if it was overwatered, but if she had it in clay soil, it could have stayed water and some of the roots could have killed it. Uh, by turning red, it's under some stress. As far as other trees, maybe look for uh, trees that can stand. As she had mentioned swamp white oak, it's doing well. Maybe along those lines would be another type of good tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Kay, let's go to you. Well, I have a question from a listener in uh, Schaumburg, and um, she says that their company sponsors a, a, a company garden, the place that she works for, and she grew vegetables, and um, most of them, some of them were very successful. She had carrots and cauliflower. Um, she said the soil's heavy clay with only about one inch of topsoil and she had one section of the garden that nothing would grow in. She couldn't grow tomatoes, she tried flowers and they didn't make it. And she wow. said there is little drainage and there is gravel from the previous drive. And she said, I thought a, a raised, she'd put in a raised bed there and does that make sense? And that makes perfect sense. Um, you might wanna clean out as much gravel as, as you can. I would put in a, a fairly, um, 
good size, tall uh, raised bed. Uh, and she wants to know what to fill it with. And I would get some good quality topsoil and some good quality compost. Um, if you have a, like a re landscape recycling center uh, somewhere up there, that would be good. Or you could just get it from a local nursery. But um, I would mix the two. And you need to be careful um, because it's going to drain quickly. So you want to watch your watering. Uh, you might need to water that a little more than um, the others. So that's what I do, and it's a great idea. It was, and if you can't grow flowers, you better switch. <laughs> well, folks, thank you for your great questions and for your expertise. We hope that you all have a great week gardening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.